again, brothers and sisters, Pastor Mark here. And today I'm starting a new series of devotional thoughts. And we're going to focus throughout this week on the future. In the theological world, this is called eschatology. And that draws on a word, the eschaton, meaning what will happen at the end or where is all this leading to. And you might recall a little bit some of the things that I've said because a lot of the material here is pulled from a sermon series that I preached in 2017 here at Ammon Valley. And so the reason that I picked this sermon series or this uh, devotional series right now is to get us thinking forward. Um, I don't know about you, but for me, at least in the last several weeks, I feel a little bit overwhelmed by the present. Um, it seems as though there's a flood of information every day, new developments with uh, protests and rioting and injustice and um, po political things that are quite consuming to our mindset and our, our emotions. And um, God's word tells us consist, uh, constantly, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Set your mind on Christ who is seated at the throne of God, um, not on the, the small daily things that uh, could consume us or distract us from him, but, uh, but look forward to what God has promised to do. And so all throughout this week, we're going to be looking forward. Now, we don't do so at the expense of thinking about today and being responsible and making good decisions. Um, certainly, Jesus would criticize that when he said tomorrow, in some sense, certainly has enough trouble of its own. And so think about what you will do today. Um, but he also calls us to live with hope, to live with expectation that his kingdom which is already present in the world, will be fully manifested and consummated one day when he returns. And so throughout the, the week, we're going to be thinking about the future, about eschatology, about the eschaton. What is all this leading to? And for today's lesson, I want to look at Luke 17, verses 20 and 21. And I'll read what Jesus says to the Pharisees, and then we'll unpack a little bit of how it might apply to our lives. Once, having been asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, Here it is, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. So I want to start this week's devotions by reminding us that the kingdom of God is not just a promise. It is not just a future reality that a Christian is waiting for and while we're waiting for it, we have to hunker down and withdraw from the world because there's just so much mess and destruction and evil and sin out in the world. No, Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. It's not just a future promise, it's a current reality that the kingdom of God is here, the kingdom of God is near, the kingdom of God is within you. Do you believe that? The kingdom of God is within you. If you repent of your sin, you're really sorry about it, you want to be different, you want to be changed, you want to be new. And if you look to Jesus Christ as your Savior, who atoned for your sin with his own blood, who rose from the dead to show his victory over sin and death, if you believe these very simple things, then the kingdom of God is within you. And that means that Jesus Christ is the king over your life. He's the king over your mind, over your emotions, over your circumstances, and over the things that you desire. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is within you. Sometimes when Pam and I are putting our children to bed, we like to sing some simple songs, and it really helps our kids if we do some hand motions with our singing. And there are certain songs that really lend themselves well to hand motions like, um, uh, you know, Fishers of Men and, and songs like that, uh, What a Mighty God We Serve. Um, but what if we add some hand motions to songs that we sing in church? Um, particularly, I'm thinking, what if we add some hand motions to a popular praise song right now called Build Your Kingdom Here? If we think of that word here, what hand motion would you add? Would it be Build Your Kingdom Here? Uh, build your kingdom in the church, build your kingdom in Sacramento, build your kingdom in the United States or in the world, in some place where there's a lot of poverty or evil or injustice. When you think build your kingdom here, do you think outside of yourself like the Pharisees were doing? Or would we say 
build your kingdom here. Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you, and so we should be asking God, build your kingdom here. Set up your rule and reign in my life. Uh, rule over me in such a way where I am not worried anymore. Rule over me in such a way where I don't want to sin anymore. Rule over me in such a way where I can love my neighbor as God has loved me. Build your kingdom here is uh, the call of that song, and I think it certainly fits in line with what Jesus taught in Luke 17. Now, in closing, I want to remind you of some more song lyrics from a hymn called Take My Life and Let It Be. And uh, hopefully it can be uh, your song and your prayer throughout this day. And towards the end of that song, there's a little lyric that says, Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Is your heart um, like sort of a throne for God? Uh, that he, he sits on that throne, he rules over you, he loves you uh, in such a great benevolent, uh, kingly, fatherly, caring way. He rules over us. So hopefully that is the prayer of your day. Take my heart, it is thine own. It will be thy royal throne. Build your kingdom here. Rule over me so that I might live with peace and joy throughout this day. Have a great day, everyone. See ya.